Holy moly, everyone. What an update cycle it's been already. First, we feasted on a new content as a whole, while setting sail to a brand new waterlogged world. Second, we met Jesus, or at least his spider friends at least, as we looked to discover more about Sea Strider specifically. And finally, Beard checked into the insane asylum and found himself actually gushing over Don't Starve Together's boats because they're actually good now. It's been fun. But we ain't quite done. For you see, there could be no true feast without diving deeper into the game's newest, freshest fruits in figs, everyone. Four unique crockpot recipes await your belly, only will be needed to actually work for these munchies at the end of the day. So from special harvesting mechanics to turning up the heat somehow, let's eat. Well, after we actually set sail to find the new waterlogged biome, that is. A biome that absolutely still needs a name change, in my opinion. I think we can finally, definitively say today that there are shallow water biomes for sure. I have generated many, many worlds in this beta branch already, and each and every one of them has seen these places really close to land, so I don't see us having any issues actually finding at least one rather quickly. And I will say that I've never gotten more than three waterlogged biomes in a world, so there might be some limits, of course. Whatever the case may be, however, we can literally see figs on the map, and each biome has a pretty healthy amount to boot from the stunt. So that's good news for us, right? Well, yes, but potentially no. As remember those sea striders we talked about? Yeah, they're about to be at play here today, too. For you see, when we pick these new mossy vines found in the biome, we not only get to one fig each time, but we may piss off some of the locals if they happen to be nearby. Well, that is if their nest is nearby, actually, as sea strider nests get disturbed by mossy vines. So either take care of the nest or nests first, or be prepared to fight for your foodies. Now, while I do not have the absolute specifics for you like I've shared in some of the previous videos for some of the other content in this update, I have experienced figs regrowing roughly two and a half to three days following a harvest from a mossy vine, and that has been the case each and every time. So I'm just gonna roll with that, yes? Yes. But let's also roll with the fact that I have seen additional mossy vines actually spawn from the canopy following me ramming great tree trunks with my new and improved nautical circles. However, it might be totally random or really, really rare for it to happen. Honestly, I don't know. But here is footage of it happening in case you don't believe me, but it is a thing guaranteed. I just don't know how guaranteed it is. And this is a potentially useful thing, as if I'm honest once more, I may have actually been a bit too down on figs at first. Don't get me wrong there though. Alone, these new fruits are not going to win us any prizes for any stat restorations at the end of the day. However, they have got some uses to them for sure. Some you might have missed. They are a fruit, so they can act as a crockpot substitute in that regard, of course. Uncooked, they will give us back 12.5 hunger, so they can be an emergency boat snack, I suppose. But you should just cook them first anyway, just to get a little more there. But one of the better uses for figs outside of being food for us might actually be it being food for fish. For you see, uncooked figs can be attached to sea fishing rods to act as bait. And to my surprise, they actually seem super attractive. Again, I have no super specifics for you, however in just simple experience with multiple types of fish, I was snagging them fast it seemed. And it wasn't just the small coastal fish either. Even some of the big boys like the rough ocean mudfish were actually taking the bait really, really fast it seemed. Even the seasonal fellas were in on it too folks. Now, does this mean that figs are the ultimate bait for all ocean fishing following this update? No. I don't think it does. Figs still have their limits, as some fish, like the hazardous ocean's dandy lionfish here, completely ignore the stuff, and I do mean completely ignore it. That said, I really did feel the difference with figs at the end of the line for sure, so I would make use. The only issue is, is that we're going to be needing a new fig each and every time we want another fish. But yes, it is time for that feast I promised you at the start here. 
The thing is, however, is it actually going to be worth it? If anything, I will give the new recipes the credit for having some fun, unique recipes that do require lesser used foods. But all in all, I'm not entirely convinced that people will be going out of their way and dying to get figs as soon as possible, if you know what I mean. Figgy Frog Witch here costs one fig, one frog leg, and has no filler limit, which is kind of nice. But it will only restore 18.8 hunger and 10 sanity. But that 10 sanity is just 10 sanity above a simple cooked fig. Fig Stuffed Trunk is next and has an absolutely great name and a really fun recipe. But considering how a koala fin trunk can actually restore more hunger and health than an entire dish made from one, plus some other stuff like figs and fillers just doesn't make any logical sense. But things do get a bit better with fig kebabs, I suppose, as one twig, one meat that can indeed be monster related, mind you, and fillers of your choice is not difficult to put together. And for 25 hunger, 15 sanity, zero health, but also a brief yet potentially effective rise in temperature from eating one can be appealing. Be mindful though, that temperature increase actually drops as the thing spoils over time. But finally, pretty much the one fig recipe that might actually be worth the trouble is Figatoni here. And that's because it's no trouble at all. It is a super easy recipe for 56.3 hunger and 15 sanity a pop. Now that's actually worthy of note, I think. Fig it up just for this. But hold up, maybe don't do that, as I almost forgot about Tree Jam here, everyone. Our true final use for figs. Costing two figs and one glamour goop, Tree Jam can act as a healer for any Wormwood players out there, and it will also force your blooming states, so that's nice. And that's because Tree Jam is actually just a basic fertilizer, and it will offer us eight growth formula, 32 compost, and eight manure nutrients, respectively. Thing is, however, the thing is also a very very special fertilizer, as it can be used to force all types of trees in the game to their next levels of growth, so do with that as you please. But at the end of the day, it is mostly for enriching our newest trees called knobbly trees, and doing so multiple times is actually key to a quote unquote hidden new tree nowadays. So keep enriching these trees, be them play or planted or not, and you will notice flowers growing atop them as you can see. So enrich them four times, and an above average tree will be yours. Enjoy lightning protection. Protection, smoldering protection, I believe, and a cool canopy wherever you please. Well, at least where there's water, of course. But more on these guys another day, I think. And there you have it, everyone. As far as I can tell, that is everything we know and have on Don't Starve Together's newest fruit, figs. This is a beta, however, so who knows what's going to change between now and its official release. But figs here are kind of an odd one to me. It's like they're trying to be a worthy presence in the game, with unique uses, spawn mechanics, recipes, you name it. But they don't exactly reach their full potential yet. Maybe it's just the knobbly trees holding them back. Maybe they should actually grow some more vines or the spider nests or the grass gators. I don't know, but we'll find out. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wishes to all, munch away, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.